some 30 tons, and therefore requiring to be secured with many lashings and much care. Here and there stood little groups of our friends, waiting for the last handshake, and to wish us Godspeed. Hello, this is exciting. Welcome to the city of Dundee and the RRS Discovery. RRS stands for Royal Research Ship. The ship is now located on a dry dock here at Discovery Point in Dundee. Construction of the ship started in 1900 and on the 21st of March 1901 she was first launched. The Discovery was the first purpose-built scientific research ship built specifically to explore and learn about the Earth's polar regions, and in this case, the South Polar region of Antarctica. RRS Discovery is a bark-rigged auxiliary steamship and is the last traditional wooden three-masted ship built in Britain. Captained by the appointed leader of the expedition, Robert Falcon Scott, the ship with a total of 11 officers and 36 crew arrived in Antarctica on the 8th of January 1902, having made a final stop in New Zealand for resupplying and some repair work. The Discovery Expedition was now underway. From a research and scientific point of view, the expedition was a resounding success, with new discoveries being made in the fields of biology, meteorology, magnetism, geology and zoology. A great deal of exploration was also achieved as well as the furthest self-record being set with sledging parties. These parties made inroads into the continent's interior for the very first time in history. The expedition lasted from 1901 to 04, with the discovery ship afterwards taking on the role of a cargo ship, before being refitted again in 1923 to be used as a research ship designated as a Royal Research Ship for the first time. From 1925 to 27, she undertook the British Oceanographic Expedition in Antarctic waters, and from 1929 to 31, she made her last journey to the far south for the Banzai Expedition. This is the British, Australian, New Zealand, Antarctic Research Expedition. Because of having been refitted, the resemblance of the ship today differs from the time the Discovery went down to the South Pole for the first time with Captain Scott. The masts are in a different position now and there has been a refurbishment of the ship. The interior of the ship now has a different layout to what it did all those years ago. And it is into the interior of the ship that we now head. Oh, my God. 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 O
If you had a YouTube channel, you would have called it Southern Embers. It is in the kitchen that we now finish our tour of the ship, my favourite place. The kitchen really was the heartbeat of all the activity that occurred down there in the south polar region of Antarctica. A place of warmth and the area to which all food was prepared. Food designed to nourish the men for their daily activities and routines in such a cold environment and as well for the sledging journeys. Warm food prepared daily and the constant cold must have been most welcome and appreciated. I've no doubt the cook was creative as well as talented and it must have been hard to cater for so many different mouths. Looking at the menu I can see clearly that the men ate well. The kitchen was designed in such a way to allow for the natural movement and roll of the ship. For example Around the cooker is a rail, designed to prevent pots and pans from sliding off. One of the foodstuffs that was cooked on the ship was ship's biscuit, and I was going to do this. One recipe called for flour and water, and another for flour, water and salt. But I have decided to cook something today not on the menu, but that is certainly associated with sailing and the sea, and that is lobscouse. So join me at home now as I cook some lobscouse, and I've no doubt that they had this as well at some point on their journey. Right folks, we find ourselves back at my house and we are cooking lobscouse stew. Now, people from Liverpool are called scouses, and that's got everything to do with the stew. Liverpool having one of the largest port areas in the world with so many sailors coming in, it was a really popular dish there eaten so much so that they just call, called the Scousers. But I think it comes from Norway, or it's Norwegian in origin, and that's changed over time. So I believe the Vikings, uh, who are essentially Norwegians, um, ate lobscouse. Of course they had a different name for it, but they used fish. And they used to raid the coast of Wales, which isn't that far away from Liverpool, and the Welsh people took on the dish as well, lobscouse, because you can find recipes for Welsh lobscouse. And they used lamb because they had so many lambs there. So it went from fish to lamb, and now it's with beef as well. So I've looked at a few recipes, and most of them are with beef. I've gone with beef and lamb in this, and I'll show you how I put this all together. Essentially, it is just a stew that I'm making here, a very simple one. I mentioned the ship's biscuit. It's also called hardtack and it's a hard biscuit, that would be used in lobscale stew as well. I've not used it in this today because I don't have any. My oven's not working. Uh, that said, you know, I think you would have that out at sea, and probably on the port you would have it without. I'm assuming that would be the case. I don't think it's every single lobscale had the hard tack. It was just one of those things that you could add, add to that. So this is boiling away. I'm going to show you how I got this all prepared. I hope you enjoy it. And... Thank you so much for, for watching. We are hoping <laughs> that it doesn't hose down with rain. It has drizzled a bit and there is more forecast later, so cheers. Okay folks, it's time to make the lobscale stew. Now I'm using the Echo Zoom today rocket stove along with the Dutch oven. The main reason for that is it's going to rain and I'm going to be able to move that if I want to. The cast iron with the Dutch oven there, it retains its heat, so that's going to be good for the stew. And I can also put briquettes in here, this being a multi-fuel cooker, so I'm quite looking forward to that. We've got onion, we've got swede, that's something I don't eat a lot of, but I'm going to try it in the stew. I have seen it in a recipe. We've got carrot, and then we've got beef here, this is quite lean. And I've also got lamb, again I don't eat a lot of lamb, or I don't eat it at all, but this is quite fatty, and I think it's going to put a distinct flavour into our stew. We've got some beef stock, and I'm going to put some Guinness in there as well. So this is my own version of lobscale stew, I think. But I think it's going to be tasty.
just wanting to saute these onions off and not browns them or anything so I've closed the damper door there I can always lift the Dutch oven off if I want to but we're just going to cook these out nicely and then we'll add the meat Yeah, that looks really good. We're going to add the beef now. And then we'll add the lamb. Oh, listen to that sizzle. Woo! Nice. Oh, oh, oh. The smell! Woo! Nice, nice! Okay, that seems to be stewing quite nicely actually. The heat from that echo zoom is quite good. So, time to add the Guinness. Oh yeah! Very nice. I'm going to add some liquid now. Water. Time to put in some swede and some carrot. I forgot one ingredient. That's the potato. So I'm going to go and peel some now. And we'll add that as well. some potatoes. Okay, I'm really glad I remembered to put those potatoes in. What we're going to do now is just put that beef stock in. I've already put one in and we'll put another one in. We're going to put the Dutch oven lid on and that's going to cook out. Now I realize this is like a stew, slow cooking and yet I'm using the rocket stove so this could take a few hours and I'm not going to be wanting to stand here all the time. I am going to use briquettes but we will remember as well if the fire does dwindle down this Dutch oven is going to keep cooking. While I've got a bit of a flame there, I'm going to put some briquettes down. I'm going to leave the door open while they catch and then I'm going to close the door and I'll see how I go. Okay, the briquettes are in there. It took me a little bit of tweaking. I took two out. I maybe put too many in to start. But now they're starting to go. Once this wood's burnt through, I'll then close the door. Nice. It's been a couple of hours now. I think we'll have a little try of this. Smells divine. Right folks, I'm going to conclude the video here. I do hope you enjoyed the visit to the ship. The stew is actually nicer than I thought it would be. I, I thought it would just be an out and out stew, and it is, but I think the swede has given it a sweetness actually, and that lamb is something I don't normally have as well. That's given it a lot of flavour. I would imagine in the cold or out at sea away from land, having some nice hearty food like this would be most welcome. So I'm going to enjoy this. I'm actually going to give it another hour of cooking, and then I'll take that inside. I'm just going to have this now. Uh, just try it. The rain's on. And I can move the echo zoom now and go back inside and I'll come back and collect the stew later. I mean, with the cast iron and the Dutch oven, that's just going to keep hot anyway. So look, uh, I try to keep things different. You know, we've done a, a different video again. Uh, I do appreciate you watching. Uh, I say thank you so much. So, hope to see you again. Uh, thanks a lot. Cheers.